Turning your flaws into assets. One of the first things that you could do in dealing with your flaws is to turn them into assets. There's really no such thing as an irredeemable trait. For example, if you have a tough time telling the truth, then you're a great storyteller. Run with it. Of course, you're going to tell people that you're engaged in fiction. Maybe you can be a good writer, presenter, narrator, or even a brainstorm specialist. Since you're good at inventing things, why not put many different concepts together and figure out what you come up with? It may well lead to better products, better marketing strategies, and better product positioning. If you have bug eyes, please understand that some people are very drawn to people with big eyes. There are certain fashion accessories that make big eyes look very attractive. If you have a big head, the same analysis goes. The truth is there's no such thing as an irredeemable trait. There's nothing that makes you irredeemably ugly and worthy of only rejection. To turn your flaws into assets, you only need to look at the root. Look to the root. What is the root of your flaw? Is it your personality? Is it how you define things? Is it how you react to things or is it a physical thing? Once you've identified it, ask yourself, can it be converted? For example, if you tend to lie a lot or exaggerate things, maybe you can be a great storyteller. Maybe you can be an idea person that comes up with weird or unexpected connections between ideas or concepts. If you have big eyes, can they be converted into assets? I don't know about you, but one of the most attractive women I've ever known actually had big eyes. Next, you could ask yourself when you look at the root of the flaw, can it be redirected? Can it be combined with other things to produce something positive? If you are a very disruptive person, you're always looking for division. You might find yourself in a situation where that kind of skill is not only viewed positively, but is actually in demand. For example, you can be a great litigator. Since you're always looking for division, you're always looking for the other side of the argument. You're always looking to poke holes in people's stories. Now, in most normal relationships, that can get quite annoying very quickly. That can cause a lot of fights and hurt feelings. However, in a courtroom, that can be a good thing. You see where I'm coming from? See if you can redirect the flaw. Change your mental habits. A lot of our emotional and psychological flaws really boil down to how we interpret the world. These interpretation issues come out of habit. A habit is something that you keep doing once you detect some sort of trigger or cue because it leads you to a reward. For example, if you're a smoker, chances are one of your triggers is eating. When you feel full after a meal, you smoke because you get that nice, mellow rush. That mellow sensation that you feel is actually your blood vessels constricting as food makes it through your system and your brain sends out the signal. So, you enhance that effect by constricting your blood vessels through smoking. This increased blood pressure leads to the rush that you get. Again, the cue is you eating and then the reward is the nice rush. So, you smoke again and again. But you can change what you habitually do to get the same rush or something similar. Maybe instead of smoking, you can chew gum to get a similar calming sensation. Maybe you can play video games and get that adrenaline rush as you compete. Whatever the case may be, you can work with the same triggers to achieve the same rewards while changing the action that you take in the middle. You replace it with different habitual actions or decisions. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.